As temperatures rise across the globe, the world's food supply is increasingly at risk. A new analysis published in the journal Nature finds global crop yields will fall 24 percent by the year 2100 because of higher emissions. That's after taking into consideration how farmers around the world are already adapting to climate change. About 40 percent of all land in the United States is used for farming, according to the Agriculture Department. Smaller yields could mean fewer options and therefore higher prices at the grocery store. Andrew Holtgren joins us now. He is an assistant professor of agriculture and consumer economics at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. He also co-authored this study. Thank you for being with us. Let's lay out the stakes. If these numbers come to fruition, what would that mean for our farmers and the kind of food we have access to? Yeah, so if these numbers come to pass, for our farmers, you're seeing lower production per unit of land. So that's, that's bad for them. But with lower production, prices will be higher. Right, so that's going to offset some of those revenue losses for farmers, but we would still see net losses for our farmers. Consumers just face the higher prices, and every, you know, all consumers are just worse off in that case. And I'll note that in poorer parts of the world, those high prices could potentially lead to de political destabilizations that could have knock-on effects in other regions. Andrew, your research found crop yields will go down even as farmers take steps to adapt to climate change. How have farmers tried to do that, and why isn't it, en it enough? Yeah, so, you know, farmers know their land, and they know their weather environment really well, right? And so they will select, for example, varietals of a crop that are more heat resistant, right? And that's an example of the sorts of adaptations farmers do. Unfortunately, these varietals also are lower yielding on average. So while you have less losses associated with, say, extreme heat exposure, you also just have lower yields overall. And so these adaptations are not free, right? They're costly. And so that's part of the problem. Farmers are adapting and they will continue ad to adapt. But, you know, nobody gets to do that adaptation for free. And that helps drag down yields, unfortunately, in this higher emissions future. So what, what is the solution? Yeah, so there's, there's a couple really important things, right? So one thing we do in this study is we paint a picture of two different futures, right? One future is a higher emissions future where you have global agricultural productivity going down and a lot of people being harmed. Another future is a more moderate emissions future where global ag agricultural productivity is not affected as much and people are just harmed less. So the emissions that we uh, emit today, the fossil fuels that we burn today, put us down one of these two trajectories, right? And so one of the things that we hope to do is help spur social conversation around what is the right level of fossil fuel emissions, given that our farmers in the Corn Belt are, you know, you look at some of these results and you wonder if the Corn Belt would continue to be the Corn Belt under a higher emissions future. The yield losses are so severe in those regions. So that's one thing. The other thing we can do is incentivize innovation from all of our really excellent inventors and scientists around crop breeding and crop genetics to focus on potential adaptation gains uh, uh, under a higher, a higher warming future. All right. Andrew Holtgren, thank you so much. Appreciate your time.